In today's video, I will be showing you how to design and 3D print your very own customized puzzle. We will be using Fusion 360 along with a couple of tips and tricks I've picked up along the way that I find to be one of the easiest ways to design a 3D printed puzzle. We will also be using the Prusa layer change function to add some color to this puzzle. So without further ado, let's get started. We want to start off by finding a couple of blank templates. So I've googled a blank puzzle as well as search the internet for a couple of different fish designs until I found one I liked. We will now use both of these images to convert into a SVG from a JPEG so that we can import them directly into Fusion 360 so that we can edit the sketch right off of the import. It makes it much easier and faster to design this puzzle. So here I'm using Inkscape. You can also use a bunch of different free SVG image converters that you can find online. Basically anything that'll convert your image to an SVG works fine. Once we do that, we can go trace bitmap so that we actually have our SVG converted. We can then separate the image from the original, delete the original, save the file as, and then use this one to use in Fusion 360. I've also done the same with our clownfish here so that we can have an SVG image of both of the JPEGs that we want to use for this puzzle. Now that we have the images we want to use in an SVG format, we can open up Fusion 360 and define the sketch plane which we want to start working on. What I like to do is then start off with a rectangle as sort of a base size that we want the puzzle to be. This doesn't really matter much because we can scale the size of the puzzle in the slicer or as a whole within Fusion 360 after we're finished the design. So once I do this, we can then import the SVG on top of this sketch plane and then size it to the size we want. So once we've okayed our SVG, we can see that all of the individual puzzle pieces are outlined as their own sketch. This is exactly what we want because it saves a significant amount of time compared to sketching each individual piece and extruding it separately. So now that we have all of the individual puzzle pieces that we're going to be using, we want to create an extruded rectangle the size of the puzzle on top of all these pieces. We will then add the clownfish image on top of this main base and then use the puzzle SVG to cut out all the pieces in one go from the design. So I've gone ahead and created our base extrude. Now on top of this extrude, we can import the clownfish SVG similarly as we did with the puzzle sketch before and perform the same operations. So now we can see our fish SVG is on top of the base extrude that we created as we want. And we can now see that all of the different parts of the fish that will be in different colors are all part of uh, different sketches. So to utilize the color change feature in the Prusa slicer, we can add a special design feature by layering these different colors of the fish that we want, i.e. being the orange, black, and white parts of the clownfish. We can layer these at different heights using the extrude feature. And then when we go to perform a layer change in the actual Prusa slicer, it will come out perfectly. So I've gone ahead and extruded the different parts of the fish that we will want to print in different colors using the layer change function at a 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 0 0.1 height. Now, if you're doing this for your own design, you want to make sure that when you're performing the extrudes, that you make sure that you extrude the parts you want to print first at the appropriate height so that you're not printing over top of what color you want in a different color. So this will take a little bit of planning and maybe some practice uh, designing and using the layer change function for yourself. So now once we have this complete, we're gonna go to the puzzle SVG that we had before and perform an extruded cut through the entire base of the puzzle. So once that cut is complete, we can see that we have the entire puzzle cut out and pretty much ready to go. One thing to note though is that in some cases, design software such as Fusion 360 or SolidWorks don't like the very small features in between cuts like this. So you may need to scale up the entire design before performing the cut, just in case it doesn't like the sort of infinitely small features as sometimes the error message will be. So we're ready for 3D printing now. Before we do that, I added some color to the puzzle so we can see what we're be gonna be expecting in terms of the final product. So let's send this off to the 3D printer and see how it turns out. So we've got the puzzle in the Prusa slicer. 
And I've intentionally modeled this a little bit smaller just to show that regardless of what size you model it, you can always adjust slightly once you actually get it into the slicer. So we make this about 125% and that should be approximately the size that we want this puzzle. And now we can slice it and implement the layer change function. So once this is sliced, we can add small cuts in the actual layers so we can implement a filament change during printing. One of our previous videos shows a more in-depth look into the layer change function and I'll leave that video in the description below. So we can see we have all of the layers appropriately sliced for the layer change function. One good sort of visual aspect that you can note of to make sure that you do have the layer change correctly implemented is that the multiple different colors on the slicer view will look sort of like the final product should look. Since we're going to be printing a significant amount of pieces in this design, one good feature that the Prusa slicer does offer is the split into objects feature. What this does is by selecting it, it separates all the individual pieces that are not directly attached so you can manipulate them individually. So for example, if one of these puzzle pieces were to fail during the printing, you could go back and split all the objects and just print one of them individually so as to not have to reprint the entire puzzle. So with all that being said, let's get this off to the printer and start printing. Okay, so here we have all the final pieces of the puzzle. We have the actual puzzle pieces here in the lower half of the box. I've printed off a top half of the box in blue, which will also act as sort of the legend for the actual puzzle. I printed a small little plaque for the actual logo of the puzzle, and I did this by using the layer change function on the Perusa again, and I took this actual model from the puzzle model that we had and just hid the actual puzzle pieces behind. And I also made the number of pieces for the puzzle just by making a simple sketch of a puzzle piece and then using the text feature and extruding both of them in a separate layer using the layer change function once again. So we can glue the little plaque on the puzzle to the front as well as the number of pieces on here. We have a nice little legend and then see how the puzzle looks. And there we have it, a nice cute little clownfish puzzle, very fun and kid friendly. 
Um, I believe that this is one of the easiest ways to make a puzzle and using the features described in the video, hopefully you can be able to recreate that and make an own puzzle of your own. So I will also be leaving the link to the download of this file available on Cults 3D for free download if you'd like to print this exact same puzzle. So if you like this video, please consider subscribing, it really helps out this channel, and as always, happy printing.